how do you define instructional design? I, I think some of the basic definitions for instructional design that are out there are, are good and appropriate and the materials that we use, the activities that we use for learning experiences. So looking at it holistically from the course perspective, you know, creating a significant learning experience for students. But I also like um, definitions that bring in um, the various facets of ID work, like there's communication aspects, there's educational psychology aspects, which I'm sure you see very keenly having already a master's in that. So I, I, I guess to fully answer your question, I would say the design and development of quality learning experiences. It's a very broad definition, so there's a lots, of, lots of room for things to fit in under that. What are, and this is a little bit more about the job title itself, but what are skills and traits you're looking for in an instructional designer? For skills and, and traits, um, I have an expectation that they're, they're going to come in with a basic understanding of some of the, the more predominant instructional design models. So um, I'm going to assume that that's in their toolbox and that's something that we're going to talk about as well. I'm going to assume that they have some educational technology skills and, and under that I include being able to work in the LMS, um, being able to help create good engaging content, whether it's multimedia or it's more static work like PowerPoint, things like that. I mean, just a note on technology, even though I do look at tech skills, and this kind of speaks to my background, I don't put as heavy of a weight on tech skills for IDs as some others do. The reason for that is because a lot of faculty um, aren't able to manage high technology things in their courses. And so they can't be the ones to update them. In some cases, they can't be the ones to facilitate them. I am also looking for somebody that, that can communicate well with faculty, that has an understanding of the faculty mindset and the faculty life. I want to at least see that they've given thought to how that consultation is going to go. So one thing that I don't want to see, and, and this, this might be as equally helpful as things that I do want to see in terms of skills and traits, I interviewed far too many IDs who felt that instructional design was simply a design model and that being an ID means you receive material and you put it up in the LMS and that is not how I practice design and that's not how I want to train an instructional designer. One of the sentences I say very frequently is design is a verb. And to me, that means that you are an active designer and that you are stepping in as a collaborative full member of that design team. So for example, I don't want to hear from instructional designers that, well, I didn't make any progress this week on my courses because the faculty member didn't send me anything, right? I'm not giving faculty homework. We have collaborative active working sessions where then I as the ID, because I have the pedagogical knowledge, the technical knowledge related to the LMS and what's possible and what my institution is going to support in terms of technology, and I have the design knowledge, I'm translating what that faculty member is saying. I'm translating what's in their existing face-to-face -face course, if there is one, if that's relevant, and I'm translating their vision. And I should have enough knowledge to take that and put it down on paper, be able to sketch out their course, be able to generate for them ideas for active applied activities and assignments, be able to help them find content, so curate good content, help them create good content, so if a faculty member is giving me that very traditional, I use this in my face-to-face -face class, and here's my 40-slide PowerPoint deck that's very text-heavy, right? I'm going to be, I'm going to know how to revise that PowerPoint for them and to have the good conversation to get them on board to chunking it up, to making it more visual, to having those key points, to following it with some sort of engaging applied activity that's a knowledge check, some of those things. So for skills and traits, I'm, I'm really looking for the whole package. I'm not, I don't want knowledge to stop at design. I don't want it to stop at technology. They need to have adult learning theory. And that, from my experience, is a huge gap in a lot of um, IDs, toolboxes, repertoires, you know, however you want to term it. Ideally, I would love to have an ID that has some teaching experience. Any substitute for teaching is a pale comparison. And I think it really helps you get in the mind of a faculty member and understand what they're dealing with. Because something else I also frequently say is don't design a course that you can't teach, meaning I could design this fantastic course and I could spend months designing this course and it would be you know, applied and engaging and focus on interaction and knowledge gains and everything. 
But if I, as the faculty member, can't facilitate that, like if it necessitates me turning around 60 paper drafts in two days so that they could use that feedback, you know, on a final draft, then it's not, still not a good course. If I'm getting burnt out trying to finish it, even though students are learning, I'm not going to keep that up for three semesters. So you have to have an understanding, too, of where the faculty are, what their workload is. You have to be able to just even via conversation or looking at their existing syllabus, get an idea of their teaching strategies and philosophies, even if they themselves have not yet set that out, because you want to pitch ideas that are going to resonate with them. So I'm looking for somebody also that can really make that personal connection and they have very good listening skills. So that goes under the umbrella of communication skills, but I think at the top of the list for the communication skills is listening skills. What about Addy backward design or, or another theory do you think is just right now at the forefront of what an instructional designer should know? Top of my list there would be backward design and Addy because I think you can do a lot with that. Um, backward design is edited, embedded within Addy. Backward design most closely reflects a type of accessible, simple instructional design model that a lot of faculty and institutions can utilize. Ideally, they would have some knowledge of some, you know, additional theories. You know, if somebody came in and they were talking about defink or they were talking about Gagne's conditions of learning, um, elaboration, you know, likelihood model, any of those things, I, I, my ears would definitely perk up. Um, something that I, that I think would be a great boost for an ID that's on the market now is to augment, you know, what they know in terms of Addy with a newer model, successive approximation model. Um, and so that is, it's abbreviated as SAM. That is a more agile design model. So any model that allows for a more rapid instructional design process, that allows for a scalable instructional design process, that allows for a process that can build in revision and maintenance, because those are all things that institutions need that faculty may not. So IDs that are working embedded within an office that may have to create a design process that's scalable. I mean, it's not a one and done. You're going to be coming back to a course for revision, or you're going to be at some point asked to, you know, lead the design and development of maybe a cohort group, especially now in the current climate where we're trying to improve those remote courses and make them true online learning courses. And there are so many courses out there and so many faculty that need help. And I would like to see some newer models like SAM that reflect that more agile, rapid type of design that is a necessity right now. What makes one instructional designer stick out from other instructional designers? One is really being able to run that consult. Um, and, and that is something that definitely is on the job trainable. Are they listening and how do they demonstrate that they're listening? So active listening is a thing. And using that within a design consult to be able to like repeat back to a faculty member what they said. So understanding of the faculty mindsets. And there are ways that IDs can really improve in this area as well. So even if somebody comes in for an interview and they're saying, you know what, I really want to broaden my skills in these ways that you're talking about, but I haven't had any opportunities. I would want to then see that ID going to faculty development trainings and workshops and listening to what the faculty are saying, right? Looking at some of the issues that faculty are having, generating some ideas for how to help faculty at scale. Because if two faculty that you're working with have the same question or problem, chances are there's lots more faculty at your institution. So being able to think a little bit outside of their own you know, ID box and look at ways that they can really influence the, the university. Um, something else that would set an ID apart for me is if they could articulate to somebody else, faculty included, what instructional design is and what value they could bring to the team. Most faculty still don't understand what an ID is. They don't understand what value they can bring. A lot of faculty still feel like, why do I need an ID? I've been, I've been teaching courses for 5, 10, 15, 20 years without the help of an ID. What could they help me with now? Or they see an ID as a technologist or somebody to put their material online. So somebody that has a really good understanding of the profession and a passion for it and is rooted in good learning. I think too often I've encountered instructional designers that, that aren't rooted in focusing on student learning and the many paths there are to heighten that and to get there, they're more focused on the tools, the technology or the LMS or 
find some good OER, or let me take what you have and check it for alignment. And those are all good things. But in that model, the ID is not a true equal collaborative team member. What do you want to see in a resume or a portfolio or a website of, uh, for a potential candidate? If, if somebody is kind of new to the job market, you know, maybe they've just completed a program or there's, you know, they're switching careers or something, um, I would still want to see on, on their, you know, some evidence on their CV or resume that they know some of the top learning theories, something there about learning, something about adult learning, brain-based learning, Give me something that shows that you're thinking not just about technology, but you're also thinking about pedagogy. So however that is, that's worked in, um, it could be under that you know, knowledge section where you talk about competencies of certain things and then something that I would expect that ID to elaborate on in an interview. I would expect them to list you know, their, their knowledge of instructional design models. I would expect to see you know, some working with QM or a similar rubric. Something about quality, I guess, is a better way to state that. To me, that also acknowledges that online is not this homogenous group, just like face-to-face -face is not a homogenous group of classes. But when a face-to-face -face course is not good, we all tend to attribute that to the professor. When an online course is not good, we attribute that to online. And then all of a sudden it becomes online can't be good, all online courses are bad, this online course was worse than the face-to-face -face version, and so it does come down to a conversation about quality. And I, I really want the ID to understand that and to be able to articulate that because it's not just about designing courses, it's about designing good courses. If I get an ID at my institution that I'm hiring for and they are, you know, they have a very small bag of tricks and their one trick pony is they can do technology well and they can put some things in the LMS. I very much run the risk of having a bunch of mediocre or poor quality online courses at my institution, which is read this chapter or watch this terribly long PowerPoint lecture or even worse, a recording of me teaching in the classroom and then you take a quiz and then an exam and then you take a quiz and then a final exam. That's not a good online course, it's not quality. So I want that ID to be able to articulate what is quality online and how do they feel they can help that institution and individual faculty achieve that vision? Because I, I want it to be portrayed as a joint vision between that ID and that faculty member. Uh, in terms of the portfolio, I do want to see some nice engaging um, instructional material pieces. I do want to see an example of a PowerPoint. So I want to see, you know, did you, for example, ideally, take a not good PowerPoint you know, from a faculty member that was too many slides, that was text heavy, that meandered and didn't have key points, that probably could have been a nice PDF study guide instead. Were you able to pull out of that what the key points were? Were you able to re-envision that and make it into a nice PowerPoint with less, less text, with visuals that reinforce what that, the individual will be saying? reduce the number of slides, help to chunk it up, make it more engaging. That I think is true ID talent. So I wanna see some of those things. Um, I, I would probably wanna see some more re-envisioning because that's a skill that IDs really need to have and we don't talk to them enough about it. So as an example, maybe they're showing me in their portfolio a before and after of a course. So that before course might have your very traditional discussion prompts, which are open-ended short essay questions, and they're just awful for online discussion, <laughs> even though they work face-to-face, -face, I want to see an ID be able to re-envision that into either a different type of uh, assignment or a different type of learning prompt that really makes good use of that discussion board and doesn't pain us when we have to say reply to another student, but don't say I agree or disagree. Um, so I want to see that they could revise and re-envision things for the faculty. Um, I would also want to see pieces where maybe they were given a charge and some faculty members said, you know, I, this is my current assignment, but I really, I want to add something into this course that's a lot more um, active, you know, and something that's higher on the cognitive level of Bloom's than just understanding and remembering. So what'd you come up with? You know, are you able to understand a topic enough maybe reference some of the existing course material enough to generate new ideas. So not just re-envision what's there, but to be a true partner, I want to see that, that you can extrapolate from what that course is already doing and look at the learning objectives, look at the, those course goals and say, 
I really think what's missing in this course is this type of assignment. How do you feel about that? Let me draft something up, right? And sell it. So I wanna know that that ID knows what good online quality is, has some pieces in their portfolio that, that demonstrate and provide evidence that they know what good quality is and that they know how to facilitate that conversation with faculty so that they get buy-in for that quality idea. It, it kind of brings it full circle to the definition because if, if we're defining instructional design, or if I am, as you know, the, the creation of significant learning experiences, that's not, you know, it, the, the, the hinge there is not technology. So if, if I'm conducting an ID interview and the ID comes in and my first question is, do you know Articulate 3, and I know exactly what you're talking about because I've, I've been in many of those interviews and I've heard many of those questions and they are technology focused, or tell me your experience with Camtasia or the LMS. Think about how differently that positions instructional design and the role of instructional design as opposed to you come in and the first question I ask you is, explain to me how the adult brain learns. And most IDs, I would guess, can't really answer that question. And if you can't answer that question, why are you in a position where the definition is, I'm helping to create quality learning experiences? Because wow. technology yeah. is just one part of that, right? The mm -hmm. whole, and design is only one part of that, right? So teaching goes into that, content goes into that, LMS, technology, and all those things. And that's why IDs have to be so well-rounded. It's an incredibly complex profession um, that, that includes a, a lot of skills that, that frankly are difficult for most people to have. To have the technology, but be able to also relate to people and have that discussion and be able to create that rapport it's, it's, it's a people profession. And I would always tell IDs, you are working with the person, you are not working with their course. Because there's lots of times where you'll say something and you, you'll, you'll get a, you know, a rejection for that idea, but that faculty member needs to let it sit. And maybe they need to teach that course one time and they're gonna come back and they're gonna have a subsequent meeting. You're creating a rapport and relationships, you're not creating a course. So you may, you know, quote unquote, lose some things for, you know, what you wanted in a particular course. But if you gain the confidence and trust of that faculty member, they'll come back and you can continue that conversation on revision. It's something too that you can, you know, when you go out on the job market and you're doing these interviews, also know, and this is unrelated to your question, but just, you know, uh, hashtag pro tip. Um, a lot of institutions, especially right now that are interviewing for instructional designers, they're not sure what to ask. It, ID is brand new to them. They, so they may just ask you about technology, but if you're there on the other side of the table and you're, you have the ability to ask them questions too and bring things up, say, I'd also like to talk about all this other knowledge that I have about this and explain how that can help create high quality learning experiences for their institution. That's also going to help set you apart, even if they don't know to ask those questions and to look at that. I, I really do look for IDs that are passionate, lifelong learners. And that means, yeah, I want to see you attend the faculty development things and work with faculty. Uh, I, I want you to say, hey, I'm reading this great book on, you know, how the adult brain learns. Do you want to talk about it? Or I just read this great article. Or ask me what types of journals that you should be reading to, you know, to keep up on the latest research. All those things are going to set you, you know, a, a, above and, and apart in terms of instructional design.